Hi, I'm Amy, and this is A Star Reads, and it's time for the continuation, part two of my Aurelium vlog. So I had started this last year, trying to catch up on all of my Aurelium books. I just haven't had a chance to continue on till now, but we're in January. I'm ready to continue on. I'm currently reading Reflection by Elizabeth Lim. I don't remember what this works for. I guess I should have done some research before starting this. <laughs> Okay, so I just looked it up and Reflection by Elizabeth Lim is for animal studies because it's about learning how to conjure a familiar. In this particular book, she ends up working with Shishi, who is the guardian for the family of the Li Shang, who is... Spoiler for the movie, if you haven't seen the movie Mulan, look away now. Li Shang does not die during that big avalanche scene where Mulan saves the day. Well, in this book, the big twist is that Li Sheng does die, and Mulan's trying to save his soul from Diu, which is the underworld. Shishi is like an animal companion in this, in a sense, in a sense. He's a guardian. Mulan has her own. She has Mushu and she has Kriki, but in this particular book, they don't go on the adventure. So, I mean, the book starts out with Mushu and Kriki. I think it works. I think it works. So anyways, the point is, I'm currently reading Reflection. I want to get this one finished so I can complete my animal studies course, and now I'm finally working on it again in January. I'm currently on page 104, and today I have a goal to get to 158. So I'm trying to read about 50 pages a day, something like that. Is that what I'm trying to do? I thought it was only 40 pages a day. Oh, I think what I'm trying to do is read around 40 pages a day, but if it doesn't end on a chapter, I'm just kind of finishing through the chapter. So in this case, today I've got to read about 54 pages. So this reads very quickly once I get to it because the writing is fairly simplistic in nature. It's a YA and the font is pretty big. I'm going to work on that today. And when I see you next, hopefully I will have a bit of an update on what I'm thinking. Oh, are you cozy up there, mister? Isaac, do you think you're a plant? Okay, so thoughts for today. I have just gotten through page 160, and all I can say is if you like Disney movies, you're gonna like this book because it feels like it's written like a Disney movie, including some of the descriptions. I do like how Elizabeth Lim really tries to stay true to the descriptions that would, well, I mean, it does feel more cartoonish, not like silly cartoonish, but like the atmosphere, like you can picture it as a cartoon. You can picture it as the actual characters of Mulan in a Disney film. And I just think that's really clever. I do know that one of the things Elizabeth Lim wanted to do that was a bit different than what the Disney movie did was stay more true to actual Chinese folklore. I mean, I know that there are elements of Mulan that were brought in as Chinese folklore, but they weren't necessarily as accurate. And so Elizabeth Lim really does that by bringing in King Yama, by putting one of the guardians as Shishi as opposed to Mushu because Mushu was a guardian that a lot of people were pretty upset about uh, because Mushu wasn't very true to what Chinese guardians would have been. You're getting elements of the actual Chinese folklore in this which I think is a nice way to try and not necessarily to show that Disney didn't do enough due diligence in trying to figure out how to represent this culture perfectly well. Because I don't feel like Elizabeth Lim's like trying to make a point to be like, you screwed up Disney. It's more like additions here from an own voice's perspective that are adding to the story. And uh, we're getting an alternative storyline. I mean, that's true. It feels like it's done in a way that's still recognizing that Disney is loved by the author and loved by people who love Disney, but also recognizing that there are better ways of representing a culture of a country. And because of that, I'm really enjoying this because I'm enjoying getting more of the actual mythology while still getting a lot of the humor and the action and the fun that you get from Disney films, if that makes sense. So I'm probably not gonna give you too many more updates on this. I mean, I'll give you updates if they're not spoilery, but I don't wanna spoil anything. But I'm also saving the review of this for a secret TBR. So if I have any more updates that are thoughtful about this particular book while I'm going through it, I will let you know. Otherwise, I'll just let you know when I have finished it and when I'm picking my next book.
Okay, so today a new video came out by G from Book Roast, and there is going to be a year-long adventure called Year in Aldea, and it's a choose-your-own-adventure quest. And so we're going to be going on quests to hopefully get a little friend at the end of the year, or become a friend, I guess, because there's one possibility where you can turn into a phoenix. So for the very first part, for January, you have two choices. Turn left, start a series, or turn right and finish a series. I'm gonna turn left and start a series because I have a lot of books this month where I'm starting series. Let's see. I'm gonna be reading Guilty Pleasures. This is the beginning of a series. I'm gonna be reading Inkheart. This is the beginning of a series. I'm gonna be reading Finley Donovan is Killing It. This is the beginning of a series. I think this, yeah, this is the beginning of a series, Wicked Fox by Cat Cho. So maybe I'll go with Wicked Fox for this one because it's the beginning of a series and I need to read it in January anyways. And it will help me go to the left. And then in February I get to figure out what's happening next. So I'm excited about this new edition that G is using because it's more of like a challenge. And you know, I don't already have enough challenges I'm trying to do every month. I need to add another one. <laughs> Okay, so I'm currently, ow, ow! My cat just jumped on my lap with all his nails. Okay, so I'm currently on page 176 of Reflection and uh, I have holes in my legs. I was kind of mentioning it before that Elizabeth Lim is doing a good job of keeping the tone of the Disney movie. When Milan will be like, oh, when we did this, or when we did that, and actually referring to specific scenes in the movie or even dialogue from the movie. So like, she couldn't forget Mushu's sly comment you like him, don't you? And that's like an actual direct line. I mean, it's not a very in-depth line, but when she refers back to things from the past, they're always direct lines from the movie or specific things that happen in the movie. So I do like that. I like that she's really trying to combine the Disney movie or what happened in the Disney movie into this reimagining version. And that's kind of, I think, also what makes it feel more like the movie itself as well as that she's actually pulling parts of the movie into it oh my leg is hurting he really scratched me okay well that's where i'm at at the moment <laughs> sorry for the rude uh, screech at the beginning okay so i'm currently on page 280 one of the things i wanted to mention really quickly there's one scene or a couple of scenes where our main characters get separated and only having mulan's perspective through this particular part was a little unfortunate because I feel like then there were some things that I felt got resolved a little too easily because we didn't see the other side of things and so I felt like that was an area where this one perspective didn't work out and it's very rarely do I read a book where I'm like wait that would have been way better with multiple perspectives I mean I like dual or multiple perspectives don't get me wrong but it's not always that obvious that I'm like oh this really would have benefited from another perspective unless it's a romance oftentimes romances i'd like the other perspective as well and most of the times those are only coming from one perspective and this was one of those instances where it really stood out to me kind of bummed me out a little bit because what happened and how things occurred afterwards i felt it was just too easy like things happened too easy in a sense. This is a pretty young YA, so that's gonna happen in general. And of course that does happen in Disney movies and we're trying to follow the pattern of a Disney movie here. So it's not that surprising, but I think that it would have benefited from another perspective in this case though, but you wouldn't just have like a story where you have one person's perspective the whole time. And then all of a sudden you have another person's perspective for a very short time. Like you wouldn't have that. So I don't know how you'd be able to add that in here but that was just kind of my feelings on it. Magda's here. Hi! And for mom's and my birthday, look at mom's hair. <laughs>
maybe we should have stopped at Great Clips. I was thinking maybe we needed to get our hair curled or something. Maybe we should have. <laughs> so for Moms and My Birthday, Magda's treating us to a girl day. <laughs> so, and, and I'm treating myself, too. Yeah, she's treating herself. So we just had massages, yes. and it was wonderful and amazing. And now we're going to go check out Village Books and just look around, browse, and if we see anything good, maybe we'll get something. Yeah. And then after that, we have... Uh, we have manicures and pedicures. Manicures and pedicures. I can't say those words. <laughs> That's why we call them mani pedis <laughs> now. <laughs> and then once that is done, we're going to go have dinner at this amazing Italian restaurant we love called Storia Cucina. <laughs> and then after that, we're going to go back to the house and watch this uh, romance. It's a new rom-com that just came out on Netflix while we do face masks. <laughs> Happy so, birthday to us. It's quite, That's right. it's quite a day of spoiling. <laughs> <laughs> and we're already feeling very relaxed, as yes. mom's, mom's hair can attest to. <laughs> they massaged my hair. <laughs> they did mine, too, but they left mine, like, you know. And I threw mine up in a bun, so. <laughs> I don't Okay, so I'm not sure that I took a lot of video footage in the bookstore. <laughs> I know you did initially of the blind date oh, yeah, yeah. shelves. Yeah, that was fun. That was cute. So you guys, did you see anything that you wanted from that show, those shelves? No, because I'm never going to be able to read it. She doesn't read. Yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> they didn't. Unless, unless they wrapped up an audio, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and mom said they didn't look very romantic, which is true. They well, didn't. There was one that she read to me that I thought was a romance book, but I don't I couldn't tell you anything more than that. Yeah, yes, it, it, they looked really good. There were a lot of more involving magic, which I thought. Oh, yeah, romantic. that's that's magical. I guess magic could be romantic. Romantical. Yeah, so I ended up getting two uh, used books. Thank you to Magda. And these are All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Andrews. I think the only time I've heard about this book was Becca from Becca in the Books talked about reading this one. I don't know if she ever ended up reading it. And I was looking at the actual synopsis, and it sounded like something I would really like. So I picked this one up for $9. And then... I picked it up for $9. Magda picked it up for $9. <laughs> and then I also got The Circle by Dave Eggers because I've been wanting to read some yes. Dave Eggers. And I think this might be on my scratch board. I'm not positive, but I feel like there's at least one Dave Eggers on my scratch board. So I would like to try this one out and see how I like his writing. And this is one that I've been interested in. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to give it a go. So we are going to go relax for a little bit until we have our manicure pedicures because yeah. yep. we're tired of wandering around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I have finished Reflection by Elizabeth Lim, which means that I have finished my studies of familiars and I know all there is to know. So I'm very excited about that. I will talk about this a lot more in another video, so stay tuned for that. So then now I need to figure out what the next class I'm gonna take is. So I went ahead and spun my spinner wheel, which you'll see right here. What ended up coming up is very fortunate because it's actually from the spring equinox. So I haven't finished all my classes from the spring equinox. And so what I had done with this spinner wheel was that if there were any subject matter that was for the autumn equinox, I couldn't go on to those classes at all until I'd finished my spring equinox classes. So in this case, it was inscription. And inscription is a class I didn't have to take for autumn equinox. So this is just finishing out my spring equinox classes. And so the class I'm taking for inscription is how to create a glyph of strength. And so for this one, the prompt is an intimidating book, which is perfect because in the month of January, I need to read Work Days and Theogony by Hesiod. Hesiod, I think. This is a small book, so it shouldn't be intimidating, right? But it's ancient classic, which tend to be written in ways that can be a little tricky at times. And I just don't really know what to expect from this. I have had 
struggles with the ancient classics when it comes to Greek mythology in the past, specifically Iliad. Not that I can't read these books, it's more just I tend to want more information. I want more back history. I want to know more about the gods before you're telling me a story about the gods. I want to know more about the people and the places before you start telling me these lists of names of people that I don't know anything about. And that is difficult for me because a lot of those ancient classics tend to have a list of all the people that were there. You know, it's almost like a record of every single person that was there. And when I don't know enough about these people, it's just not as interesting to me. So I am excited to read this one because Theogony in particular is a history of the gods from the time that they came into being until well, I don't know until what point, but it's, it's supposed to be a history of the gods. Now it's very small, it's very short, so I don't know what all I'm gonna get from that. And I am excited that it'll give me an opportunity to kind of fill in the blanks where I need them to be filled. And then Works and Days is another work that is more about what life was like for farmers and peasants and the people who were living within this period of time. So that is more of like a guide to how you should live your life and what everyday life looks like for people who are working during these ancient times. I think it was 700 BC when Hesiod was alive. It also intimidates me because it's so small, like how dense is the writing gonna be in this? What all is gonna be included here? So that's what I'm gonna use to take this course of how to learn how to create a glyph for building strength. So wish me luck and we'll see how long this one takes. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the year in Aldea. I had told you before that I was gonna go with Turn Left, start a series, and use Wicked Fox as the book for that. But we're getting close to the end of the month. I don't know when I'm gonna get to Wicked Fox. So what I decided to go with was Guilty Pleasures because I needed a guilty pleasure. And so I picked this up and this is the very first in the Anita Blake series. So I'm gonna count this as my turn left, starting my journey on the adventure through Aldea. This is a reread for me, a urban fantasy that I had read a long time ago when I was in high school. I think I first started the series. It was so nostalgic. It was so fun to get back into these characters. One thing I can say for Laurel K. Hamilton is she knows how to create characters. And the characters that you get to know, the way you feel about them, the relationships that are built between these different characters, it grows and grows and grows throughout the series. So you start getting little tidbits of some of the characters in this. And then of course, you're gonna get a lot more as we go forward, including a lot of new characters. And the character Anita Blake is being built in the beginning of the story. You see a lot of her personality. She's a bit of a badass. You know, Anita Blake's a bit of a badass. So it was a lot of fun getting back into this. The story was exciting. The pace of these is very fast. The last few chapters is incredibly fast, a lot of action. These are like candy to me. I just love them. On a reread, in my almost 40 years, I probably would give this a 4.5 stars if I was reading it for the first time. But because it's a nostalgic book, I'd probably keep it as a five star just because it is a lot of fun. It brings back a lot of memories and I really did love this series. Okay, so I'm just dipping my toes into Works and Days in Theogony, meaning I'm reading the introduction at the moment. They don't know exactly when, but it was written anywhere between 800 and 600 BCE. And one thing that I think is pretty funny in here is there is a little passage that was written in frogs in 405 BCE by Aristophanes, obviously a couple to several hundred years later after uh, this was written. It's just a funny little passage. It says, look how right from the start the noble poets have been useful, been teachers. Orpheus taught us initiations and avoidance of bloodletting. Museos, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, taught divination and cures for sickness. That's a poet I've never heard of. And Hesiod, the working of the soil and the seasons of harvest and plowing are very very practical friend, our practical poet, and divine Homer. Where else did he get his honor and glory except from teaching tactics, military virtues, and the arming of heroes? It's kind of interesting to hear this critique almost of 
Greek poets deducing everything that they have written down to this stereotype in a sense. So this is what this author writes. I do think that's pretty cool. I like hearing perspectives from other authors, especially when it's like that far back, you know, he's basically reviewing these poets, but in 400 BCE. And it gives me a little more perspective of the people that are involved, what people at that time thought of these Greek poets. I think that's why I said like when it comes to these ancient classics, I really like to know a lot more. I want to know about the people involved. I want to know more details because it helps me put something in perspective that is hard to put in perspective. I like that. That's why I sometimes like annotated versions of these Greek mythology classics are preferable because you get a little bit of that background history. You learn a little bit more about the stories that maybe surround these mythical creatures, or these people, and then why that matters to these different Greek poets and why they're telling the story. Ooh, I'm going to keep reading because I think this sounds interesting. To the age of Pericles, Hesiod was one of four mythic bards standing at the source of Greek tradition. His special province was farming, and there were those who believed that of the many poems attributed to him, the only one that was truly his was Works and Days. It is only in the Theogony that the speaker identifies himself as Hesiodos but only in the works and days does he emerge as an individualized human being with a story and a characteristic idiosyncratic view of the world. So apparently they're not exactly sure that Theogony is actually his science. Is that, is that what's being said here? Hmm. Okay, so this next section is going to seem completely unrelated to this particular vlog. And, and frankly it is. <laughs> but I was not doing any Sunday sum ups in February. I didn't actually get a chance to add any of the clips that I filmed for Sunday Sum Ups into any videos. So I'm kind of incorporating them here in this video because I just want to give updates as to what was going on during the time that I was reading all these books. And so this next book review has nothing to do with Aurelia, but it did have to do with my reading in February. <laughs> okay, so I finally finished my first book of February. It's the fifth already. It hasn't been a great month for reading yet. Hopefully it'll start getting better. The very first book that I finished is The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, and this was not written for me. It was just not written for me. I'm probably going to give it a 2.5 stars. My enjoyment was... there was not much enjoyment. Like, I didn't hate it. It didn't do anything poorly. I can't say that I disliked it. I can say that... I was really indifferent to the storyline. I know that this is very philosophical and there are also fable elements to this to teach you a lesson, to teach children a lesson. It doesn't offend me in any way. There's nothing offensive about it. It just didn't connect for me on any level. The writing didn't connect for me. The characters didn't connect for me. The story didn't connect for me. I had very little thoughts on this because it just I don't want to say boring, but yeah, it was kind of boring for me. And I had no problem putting it down. I only made sure I got through it because it's so short and I wanted to scratch it off my little scratch board. And yeah, 2.5 stars. I didn't DNF it. It wasn't that bad, but like, I'm really sorry because I know this is a me problem. So many people love this book and it just did nothing for me. Okay, so I just actually finished Works and Days. I'm about halfway through now because then I will just read Theogony next. And I also read the notes afterwards about the different parts of the poem that maybe I wouldn't have understood the references or what have you. And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the poetry. It was very interesting. And I'm gonna look and see if I can find a performed version of it. It'd be interesting to see if since this time somebody has performed it and I could watch that. I don't know if people do that. I think it would be pretty cool. I mean, it is unfortunate how misogynistic the ancient Greeks were. And his side in this is apparently based off the notes, not as misogynistic as he could be considering the times. And there's a section here all about like advice for marriage. And it's basically how terrible it is to have to marry because women are such 
uh, drain on men and they're so difficult and how horrible wives can be. But also what kind of woman you should look for and when you should look for them. So it's, yeah, there's a lot of misogyny this time. So it's not surprising at all to me when you think of different mythology and how women were treated poorly and how many women were raped at this time because it there wasn't a lot of respect for women. And it shows that within these different stories, within these different songs, that they were using as advice for how to live your life and that they were sharing among each other. A big role of women in this was to serve men or torment them and... I mean, you know, that's never fun to read. But aside from that, I did enjoy this a lot. And I enjoyed all the different notes and all the different information that I'm getting about this time because that was one of the things I was most excited about reading this was that Hesiod is known to be, this is how to live your everyday life back in the ancient Greek times. And so that these songs were spread so you could get an idea of some of the best ways to honor your gods or live your life. And it wasn't necessarily like a how-to manual, but I'm guessing sort of like an affirmation or something like that. If you're doing all these things, you're living your life correctly. I got presents. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, let's see what this says. <sighs> Oh, just a little something something to say I love you and happy birthday oh <laughs> it's from Paige Paige oh you just you're so wonderful thank you so much <laughs> if you're not watching Paige's channel please do please go check her out Paige is such a wonderful person and I'm so happy to have her in my life because she's so sweet she occasionally will just message me and be like hey how are things going because she knows that I've, I have been struggling lately <laughs> she's just she's wonderful and she celebrates her birthday in february as well and i did send her something but it it's gonna take her a lot longer to get there but i'm just so excited for her to get her gifts hopefully she doesn't already have them but yes i'm so excited what do we get <gasps> yes thank you oh my gosh thank you for continuing my series i am so excited about this i really have been wanting to reread this one actually i've been really wanting to reread the first one which i got recently and then thinking about rereading that one i'm like well then i want to reread this one <laughs> and then i need to continue this series but these are nice and short books i listen to these on audiobooks i really want to read them physically because i haven't read them physically yet and i'm excited to do so okay here's the next one let's see what it says also, of course, I had to get you this, and it has a sticky out face. Thank you for being my book too, Bestie. This is just much love from Paige. I absolutely love this, and I love Paige. So I am very excited to see what this is, because she had to get this one for me too. Loud car. Oh, oh, it's paperback. Oh, it's got some embossing on the cover. Yes! Okay, perfect! <laughs> okay, thank you, Paige. Well, we're reading this series together. There's so many loud cars going by right now. <laughs> we are reading this series together because we're reading it for Bookstar Read Alongs in 2023. And if you have not joined us but you want to read this series, please come join us. Paige has already started my collection by getting me the Bone Season. And the Bone Season had the Pale Dreamer in it, which is the 0.5 prequel. And now I have the Mime Order, so I'm just, I'm ready to get started. I'm ready to get started, let's get the series going. And I'm so excited, thank you so much, Paige. You know, you're just spoiling me. You're really, really spoiling me. So <laughs> I will link everything you need to know about Paige's channel below. Just go watch her, she's just amazing. She's the kind of beautiful chaos that we all need in our lives. And she just makes me feel so happy when I get to see her. She's just got such a bubbly, wonderful personality. So please go watch Paige. One thing that's really cool about this is I'm on Theogony learning about the 
the lineages of all these different gods and goddesses and stuff. And I recently reread Song of Achilles, and there's goddesses and gods like Thetis and Scamander, ones that are not as well known, not major gods and goddesses that I don't know as much about or who they came from or, you know, what their story is, what their deal is. So it's kind of fun to find their names in here and be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And of course, I've read a couple others that I've heard about in other stories that I'm like, oh, I see where that's coming from and where these influence of characters, characters' names that I knew had some Greek mythology element to them, but I didn't know exactly where they fit into the story. Like this is giving me a really good idea of where exactly they fit. I mean, it's not something that I would remember off the top of my head, but this is a really easy way to access these different gods and see like, oh, okay, they are born from this god or goddess. And this is exactly what I want when it comes to trying to figure out how everything works together. That way I have a better time remembering who these gods and goddesses are because I understand where they fit. And that is the way my brain works. So this is like super enjoyable actually. I'm just really enjoying this book because of that, because it's giving so much clarity. It's explaining so much about the history of these different gods and goddesses within mythology. And I mean, it's not explaining a ton. Like there's a, not a lot here. It feels like it's giving me so much more information than it would seem considering how small a book this is. Well, wouldn't you know it? I'm being spoiled even more. <laughs> Oh, this is wonderful. This is actually turning out to be a really good week because my last few weeks haven't been that great. So now all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, gifts. And things are getting really good, like with school and stuff too. So I'm like, ooh, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Let's see what it is. Oh, Christine, happy birthday. Thank you for your friendship from Christine from an autistic reader. Christine is so wonderful. And I'm so glad we got to spend time getting to know each other better last year with the Narnia read along. It was so much fun. So yeah, please go check out Christine's channel. I will link it down below. And also join us in the reading group, Autistic Reads. I will link the discord down below. We have different books we read each month. I'm doing it whenever I can. Like I haven't committed to the whole thing, but I figured if I can make the books work, I'm definitely gonna try doing it. Okay, let's see what I got. Oh, oh I'm so excited. Oh. <laughs> I'm really excited. Oh, Christine. Okay, you, you don't understand. Like, every time people hold up this book and show it off, I'm always like, I need it. <laughs> I want to be able to hold it off and say, oh, that's a chunker. <laughs> oh my, I'm so, oh my God. Ah! <laughs> oh. I got the brick. I got the brick. And now I can say, oh, look everybody. Yeah, this one's a chonker. It's a real chonker. Can you believe this book? I don't know when I'm going to get to it because it's a real chonker. <laughs> the things that amuse me. <laughs> This book is stunning though. I've heard that even though it's huge and a real chonker, uh, it is actually very readable. And I'm really excited because Bookstar is reading Samantha Shannon for the Bone Season series. And I have like, just, I've always wanted this book. I don't even know if it's any good. I mean, actually I've heard it's really good, but I just, I just, I love seeing people hold it up. <laughs> And I'm excited because now I can do the same. And I'm just gonna hold it up in every single video I do from here on out. So every time I talk to you, I'm just gonna hold up this big chonker and say, whoa, look at that chonker. It's a really big book. Oh no, I might have to read this this month. Look at that chonker. <laughs> Thank you, Christine. <laughs> That's just how Zeus, the High Lord of Thunder, made women as a curse for mortal men. Evil conspirators. And he added another evil to offset the good. Whoever escapes marriage and women's harm comes to deadly old age without any son to support him. <laughs> That's so horrible. It's snowing again. <laughs> So it's
it's editing Amy here and I'm looking through all my footage and I don't know what happened. I know I did a review of Works and Days and Theogony by Hesiod, which I found out it's pronounced Hesiod. So this whole time you'll be hearing me say Hesiod and I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but I don't speak very much ancient Greek. So, you know, <laughs> I'm learning. Uh, I don't know what happened. I know I filmed something and it's just not here. So what I'm gonna say is that I think I gave it four stars and I really enjoyed it. You basically got to hear everything I thought about it while I was talking about it through this vlog. And so there's not too much more to say. I really enjoyed reading that book a lot. I'm gonna keep it on my shelf so that I can reference back to it anytime in the future that I'm reading Greek mythology and like need to tie some things together. And yeah, overall, it was just a really interesting read. Definitely elements to it, like I said, that were misogynistic that I didn't like, but it's also nothing I was unfortunately that surprised about because we know how horrible things were for women at that time. So I did though really enjoy this and I felt like the reading was very accessible. And then all the comments and all the things that were provided by the translators and everything that had happened in this book was just very helpful. So if you ever get a chance to pick up this book because you're interested in learning more about Greek mythology, I definitely recommend it. It's me again. <laughs> I'm realizing as I'm editing this and how long this vlog is at the moment where I'm cutting off right here, I think that this would actually be a good place to stop, finish this vlog, and then put the rest of it into another vlog part three, if you will, of my Aurelium catch-up vlogs. So stay tuned for that. It'll be coming soon. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe so you can see what happens as I continue trying to catch up, trying to get ready for the Aurelium spring equinox. Will I make it in time? Stay tuned to find out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.